Colorado Republican Congresswoman um, Lauren Boebert, also a gun rights advocate, uh, made headlines yesterday. Did you hear about this? After a standoff with Capitol Police, and reports say that she actually set off metal detectors while walking into the House floor and refused to let Capitol Police search her purse. Take a look. Now, following this incident, she took to Twitter to say, I am legally permitted to carry my firearm in Washington, D.C. and within the Capitol complex. Metal detectors outside the House would not have stopped the violence we saw last week. It's just another political stunt by Speaker Pelosi. And joining us now to break down what happened is Congresswoman Lauren Boebert herself. Uh, thank you so much for taking the time to join us. Uh, you know, this when this broke out last night on uh, social media, it really spread quickly. Uh, tell us exactly what happened. Uh, this involved you and also other members of Congress. Yes, it's very unfortunate that leadership is, is putting these measures uh, in place. The threats that we saw on January 6th did not come from the House chambers. Uh, the Capitol building was breached by violent protesters, which is inexcusable and unacceptable in, in every uh, sense of the term. Uh, what we saw on January 6th was not a need for more metal detectors. Uh, and and if, if something were like this were to happen again, will Speaker Pelosi be whisked away while the rest of us members are shuttered in the House chambers once again, vulnerable and defenseless? And now uh, Speaker Pelosi has announced to the entire world that all members of Congress are completely unarmed. And uh, that leaves us very vulnerable uh, for any attacks that would come uh, our way in the House chambers. On January 6th, that was not the first time uh, bad, violent people breached the Capitol building. And this is why I uh, took a stand when I first got here to make sure that I would be able to protect myself in all areas of the Capitol complex. So uh, let's go through the, the, the issue uh, which is there was a metal detector. Uh, it went off. Um, I, I think something was in your purse. I assume you, you had a, a weapon in there. And th explain what happened, because the way we're interpreting it is you wouldn't let them look in your purse. So I guess I'm kind of curious how that resolved itself. And then is there an issue with you carrying on the floor? And if there is, is there a way to bring that up to make sure that you can? So there's a there's a lot to unpack there. Yes, sir. On, on January <laughs> on January sixth, uh, I was in a position where I, I was vulnerable, and I, I really uh, I really felt um, cheated. I, I sat in the House chambers thinking, man, I've done everything that I can to make sure that I am well protected everywhere I go each and every day, and here I am following House rules and not carrying my firearm on the House floor. And this is the one time in my life where uh, I, I would potentially need that. There were other Republicans who stayed in the House chambers to help Capitol Hill police. And the Capitol Hill police officers were grateful for their assistance. They even posted them in, in uh, areas where they were most vulnerable and needed their help in, in uh, keeping these uh, violent protesters back. Uh, so. Uh, when, when I walked through the metal detector, um, I had no intention of emptying my pockets. I had my cell phone, I had my AirPods, and uh, all, all sorts of things. Um, I have always said that I have followed all D.C. carry laws. Um, I have followed all rules of, uh, that, the, the, um, that the House has put forward uh, for carrying. And uh, it's very unconstitutional to stop a member when they're on their way to vote. So there were many members, uh, like myself, who, who refused um, to be wanted and uh, to be searched like we were going through TSA uh, when we were on our way to vote. So uh, I, I guess I made the mistake of being the first member uh, on the floor to vote uh, because it, it turned into um, about 10 minutes of me standing there uh, respectfully but defiant. Uh, I had conversations with the Capitol Hill police officers. I hope they all know how grateful I and many others are for their service, uh, that we are praying for them, praying for protection over them, and we're, we're just we're just so over overflowing uh, with gratitude for them and and uh, the work that they do for us. And so I had that conversation uh, with them, and eventually I was permitted to enter. Um, I think that was after about ten of my colleagues uh, just rushed through a, a different mm -hmm. set of uh, metal detectors uh, at a, at another entrance. Uh, Congresswoman. Um 
Two questions for you. One, it was my understanding that you all did not know that these metal detectors would be in place, that this was something new, uh, that it was put there. You guys were not aware of it. Um, three questions. Second, did you have a firearm in your purse, if you're comfortable answering that? And then third, your thoughts on impeachment. Obviously, you said that you were discussing things there with uh, the Capitol Police, uh, so people would understand why the Capitol Police would be on guard and want something like this, because they want to feel secure as well after everything that transpired. Yes, uh, so we, we did find out about these metal detectors just moments before we were scheduled to vote, and uh, there were conversations that were taking place of, of members being uh, very upset uh, about this uh, action that was being taken. Uh, we have um, Capitol Hill police officers that have stopped me in the halls, and, and we've communicated, and many of them tell me uh, how proud they are of the stance that I'm taking and to not back down. Uh, in fact, I'm, I'm wearing a pen today that was given to me by, by one of the sergeants here. And, uh, you know, these these guys, uh, these these men and women are just so incredible here. And I've, I've really had a, a, a just a privilege and an honor to get to know uh, so many of them. And one of the solutions, uh, I kind of missed this earlier, uh, to, to disarming us uh, right there at the, the doors of the House chambers would to be to allow us to have lockers in the cloakroom. If you are going to disarm us, then have a way for us to uh, carry our firearms where they are permitted and then safely secure them where they are not. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it, if we are not able to transport, uh, transport our firearms uh, in, in certain areas, then we wouldn't be able to carry at all. Uh, so I, uh, I, I will most likely be putting forward some sort of, of letter or proposal to install lockers in the cloakrooms for the members uh, mm -hmm. who, who choose to uh, store their firearms there. And I did just um, debate today. I, I spoke on the House floor regarding this sham impeachment. Uh, the, the Democrats have wasted no time in, in showing uh, us. Um, I, just, Congresswoman, yes. I, I apologize profusely here. We have to take a break. I, I, I'm being beaten over the head mm -hmm. with it. Could you stay for a couple minutes? We'd love to hear your insight on the impeachment and what you had to say. Could you stay with us another couple minutes? I would love to stay with okay, you. Okay, thank yes. you. I'm so sorry to interrupt, and we'll be. You just watched Newsmax TV, America's fastest growing cable news channel, now in more than 70 million homes. You can get Newsmax TV on your cable system or check your cable guide. And if your system doesn't carry Newsmax, call them, tell them you want Newsmax TV because we're real news for real people.